Theodore Garrico's The Woman with Gambling Mania is a profound exploration of human distress and mental turmoil. The painting features an elderly woman whose eyes seem lost, her gaze a little bit wild, as if she's staring at something that only she can see. The romantic movement, to which Garrico belonged, often delved into themes of madness and the darker aspects of the human psyche. Garrico's brushwork is confident and unrestrained, contributing to the intensity of the woman's expression. The muted greens and browns of the composition frame the pale white of her face, drawing attention to her haunting stare. This use of colour accentuates the stark reality of her condition, capturing the essence of her obsession and the grip it has on her. The painting is not just a portrait, it's a window into the soul of someone caught in the throes of an uncontrollable passion. Garrico's work serves as a poignant commentary on the human condition and the fine line between passion and madness. Guercino's Saint Francis in Meditation is a deep and moving portrayal of Saint Francis, deeply lost in thought, possibly wrestling with the weight of his spiritual journey. The painting is dark and moody, with the saint's face emerging from the shadows, his eyes looking upward in reflection. Guercino uses light and shadow, chiaroscuro, to draw us into the emotional world of Saint Francis showing us the serious, almost pained concentration on his face. The painting makes us feel the saint's dedication and the intensity of his faith. Even without seeing what he's looking at, we can tell that he's thinking about something that matters a lot to him. Gercino has created a scene that's not just about a religious figure, but about the human experience of searching for meaning and the peace that comes from believing in something greater than oneself. Francisco Goya's Old Women or Time is a haunting portrayal that casts a somber light on the reality of aging and the fruitless pursuit of youth. The painting depicts two elderly women clad in youthful finery, with their faces betraying the ravages of time. They appear oblivious to their true reflections, hinting at a disconnect between perception and reality. This work is rich in symbolism. It's Goya's way of reminding us that no matter how much we try to hold on to beauty or youth, time catches up with everyone. The contrast between the lavish dresses and the women's aged features is a powerful visual metaphor for the passage of time and the vanity of clinging to a youthful persona. Goya doesn't shy away from showing the less glamorous side of human nature, and here he's almost warning us not to let vanity blind us to the truth of our mortality. Louis Leopold Boy's Theatre Box, The Day of the Free Performance, is a captivating scene teeming with characters, each expressing a range of emotions. Packed into the theatre box, the crowd embodies the full spectrum of human sentiment. There's the annoyance of being jostled in the crowd, the fatigue of one who finds no joy in the performance, and the distraction of those whose attention drifts away from the stage to the drama within the audience itself. Boy's work is a fascinating snapshot of life's play, the small personal stories unfolding within the larger narrative of the theatre. It speaks to the stress we might feel when we're expected to participate in social rituals that might not hold our interest, and how different people react to these situations. Some seem to whisper and share jokes, others appear lost in their own thoughts, and a few try to focus on the performance. The painting is like a study of the human condition, showing how varied our experiences can be even when we're all sitting side by side, looking at the same thing. It's a reminder that every face in a crowd has a mind behind it, alive with thoughts and feelings as complex as any work of art. Peter Bruegel, the Elders, The Blind Leading the Blind, 
is a striking representation of the perils of ignorance and the misfortune that often comes from it. The scene shows a line of blind men, each holding on to the one in front, but leading one another into a ditch. The front man has already fallen, and it seems inevitable that the others will follow. This painting is a cautionary tale about the dangers of blindly following others without seeing for yourself, which can lead to disaster. Brugel uses this image to explore themes of leadership and wisdom, or rather the lack thereof, and the human tendency to sometimes follow without considering where we're really going. The painting's timeless message about the importance of awareness and the risks of naivety still resonates today. Victor Bronner's self-portrait is a haunting image, especially because it turned out to be an eerie prediction of his own future. In this painting, Bronner depicts himself with an injured eye, which is particularly disturbing considering he would later lose his eye in real life. This aspect of the painting gives it an air of prophecy and adds a layer of meaning to the work. The portrait is not just a reflection of Bronner himself, but it delves into broader themes such as fate and destiny. It also touches on the artist's role in society. As someone who not only creates, but also experiences and sometimes even predicts the pains of life. Bronner's painting invites us to ponder on our own identities and the ways in which we might be transformed by the events of our lives. Rene Margret's The Double Secret presents a striking image that dives deep into the theme of a divided self, revealing the often hidden layers of our identity. In this painting, a woman's face is split in half, each part unveiling a different aspect. One side shows the woman's face looking outward, calm and collected, while the other side peels away to reveal a darker, more mysterious interior scene. The artwork taps into the notion that we all have parts of ourselves that we keep concealed from the world, and sometimes even from ourselves. The serene seascape in the background juxtaposes the unnerving foreground, creating a surreal sense of disquiet. Margaret's painting suggests the tension between the face we show to the world and the inner realities we keep secret, exploring the complexities and conflicts of our inner lives. The painting invites viewers to contemplate the masks we wear and the secrets we harbour, reflecting the surrealist fascination with the mysteries of the unconscious mind and the human experience's enigmatic nature. The painting The Slaughter of the Innocents by Nicholas Pawson is an intense representation of a dark and tragic biblical story. Pawson captures the moment of terror when the soldiers, following King Herod's orders, kill the male infants of Bethlehem in an attempt to eliminate the newborn Jesus. The central figure is a mother in anguished disbelief, her mouth agape in a silent scream as a soldier forcibly removes her child from her grasp. The painting's emotional core is this raw display of fear and helplessness. Parsons' use of dramatic lighting accentuates the chaos and brutality of the scene with the dark tones and shadowing contributing to the overall feeling of dread. Passon does not shy away from the brutality of the subject matter, showing other soldiers in the act of murder and mothers in various states of fear and grief. His detailed work invites contemplation on the human capacity for violence and the innocent suffering it causes. The painting serves as a powerful visual narrative of fear, loss and the devastating impact of tyranny. The painting Andromache Mourning Hector by David is a moving portrayal of Andromache's grief after the death of her husband, Hector. Hector was a Trojan prince and the greatest fighter for Troy in the Trojan War. In the scene, Andromache is shown with an expression of deep sorrow as she mourns over Hector's body. 
Her face conveys the pain and despair of someone who has lost their beloved, capturing the universal fear of loss that is part of the human experience. David's composition places Andromache at the centre, clutching her young son Astyanax, who reaches out unaware of the permanence of death. The backdrop of the painting is sombre, with dark draperies and the stark architecture enhancing the mood of mourning. The lifeless body of Hector, adorned with a laurel wreath symbolising his heroism, contrasts with the vibrant presence of Andromache, emphasising the tragedy of his death. This work of art reflects not only the personal tragedy of Andromache, but also the larger theme of the human condition, the consequences of war, and the poignant reality of mortality. David, through his neoclassical style, provides a window into the emotional depth of the characters from the ancient epic, making their centuries-old story resonate with contemporary audiences. In The Ballad of Lenore, or The Dead Travel Fast, the artist Horace Verne captivates the viewer with a visual representation of fear and the supernatural. Painted in the 19th century, this work is imbued with the Romantic era's fascination with emotion, the Gothic and the macabre. The scene is engulfed in darkness, illuminated only by the eerie glow of the horse's hooves striking the ground and a faint unsettling light in the background. This chiaroscuro technique heightens the tension and focuses our attention on the central figures, Lenore and her ghostly fiancé. Lenore's facial expression is one of the painting's most powerful conveyances of fear. Her eyes are wide, her mouth agape, as she clings to a figure whose true nature is revealed by the skeletal visage reflecting the moonlight. The horse, black as the abyss, is a harbinger of death, reinforcing the theme of a journey from life to the afterlife. Verney's composition is a masterful narrative device. The diagonal line formed by the horse and riders leads our eyes across the canvas, hinting at their unstoppable momentum towards the grave. The background is a blur of spectral figures and twisted trees, suggesting the chaotic overlap of the mortal world and the spectral realm. The armoured skeleton, a symbol of the inescapable finality of death, is juxtaposed with Lenore's vitality, underscoring the tragic irony of her situation. The Flood by Anne Giraud Triosen is a powerful painting that shows a family fighting against a great flood. Made in the early 1800s, this work of art really shows how small and weak people can seem when faced with the huge power of nature. We can see a man in the front, looking very scared, trying to save them from the rising water. The way Gyrod painted the light and the dark colours makes everything feel very intense and full of emotion. The dark, stormy sky with lightning adds to the feeling that this is a very bad and dangerous situation. The bright colours of the people's clothes make them stand out against the scary dark background. Orphan Girl at the Cemetery by Eugene Delacroix, painted around 1824, is an evocative study in the expression of fear and desolation. This piece stands as a testament to Delacroix's mastery of emotional portrayal through visual art. The girl's upward gaze and slightly parted lips suggest an intense moment of realization or dread. Her eyes are wide, capturing a fixed point beyond the canvas. The viewer is left to wonder what has caused such a reaction. A sound, a sudden insight, or the overwhelming weight of her situation. The artist's choice of a cemetery as the backdrop, a universal symbol of death and loss, compounds the sentiment of fear 
by confronting the viewer with the ultimate unknown. Derecro's technique contributes significantly to the theme. The brushwork is deft, with the texture of the paint enhancing the emotional depth of the scene. The color palette is subdued, dominated by earthy tones that suggest decay and neglect, which intensifies the feeling of abandonment. This orphan girl, juxtaposed against a backdrop of graves, represents a poignant embodiment of human fear, fear of death, of being alone, and of being forgotten. Delacroix's use of light and shadow creates a dramatic effect, focusing the viewer's attention on the girl's face and the exposed shoulder, thereby humanizing her vulnerability. The painting resonates with the raw essence of fear, not through overt gestures or melodrama, but through a profound subtlety that Delacroix was known for, allowing the viewer to sense the palpable despair that envelops the orphan girl. The Sleepwalking Lady Macbeth, by Henry Fuseli, is a striking representation of psychological turmoil and guilt that deviates from the neoclassical tradition of the 18th century, embracing instead the emerging romantic sensibility of the era. Fuseli's depiction of Lady Macbeth in a state of somnambulism encapsulates the inner chaos wrought by her own misdeeds. Her outstretched arm, and the vacant yet tormented gaze serve as visual metaphors for her attempt to grapple with the intangible and to fend off the darkness that her actions have wrought upon her conscience. The torch she bears not only lights her way, but also symbolizes the enlightenment that sleep eludes her tortured soul. Her disheveled appearance and bare feet suggest a disconnect from reality, emphasizing the involuntary nature of her actions while her mind wrestles with the horrors she has helped to unleash. Fuseli's mastery in the use of chiaroscuro, the contrast between light and shadow, heightens the drama of the scene and accentuates the emotional intensity of Lady Macbeth's experience. The darkness that envelops her is pierced only by the stark, almost supernatural light from the torch, creating a scene that is as much a literal depiction of the moment from Shakespeare's play, as it is an allegory of the battle between knowledge and ignorance, guilt and innocence. The figures in the background, recoiling in horror, serve to underscore the isolation of Lady Macbeth, as she is imprisoned within her own mind, her guilt isolating her from humanity. Fuseli's work thus goes beyond mere representation, delving into the complex interplay of light and darkness both literal and metaphorical, to portray a soul in the grip of an unrelenting and terrifying psychological descent. The Shield with Gorgon's Head is an arresting three-dimensional work by Swiss painter Arnold Bucklin, whose inspiration often drew from the wellsprings of Greco-Roman antiquity. The artwork resonates with the mythological ethos of the period, encapsulating the terror-inducing visage of the Gorgon, a powerful ancient symbol meant to ward off evil. Butlin's rendition of the Gorgon's head is masterfully executed, capturing both the horror and the pathos of the creature whose gaze was said to turn onlookers to stone. The face is contorted in a scream, with eyes wide in a permanent state of shock, and the serpents, her hair, are rendered with a lifelike quality that adds to the unease of the viewer. The expression is one of eternal anguish, a testament to Buckland's ability to convey emotion through his art. The choice of medium in this piece is particularly striking. The use of metal adds a layer of authenticity to the representation of the shield, a common defensive weapon in ancient times that often bore intimidating designs. The metallic sheen contrasts with the dark patina of the recessed background, highlighting the Gorgon's head 
and allowing the details to stand out with startling clarity. The shield's rim is polished to a golden hue, providing a stark border that frames the terror within. This work is not only a tribute to the mythological creature, but also a reflection on the nature of fear and its embodiment in art. Buckland's shield with Gorgon's head transcends mere representation, becoming an object of power and protection through the tangible presence of the Gorgon's formidable image. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.